we've already discussed that if every element in a set S can be represented as a linear combination of vectors in a set V, then V spans S. We've also discussed the idea of independence versus dependence. If the linear combination of all the vectors in a set V equal to zero has only the trivial solution, the unique solution for zero, 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 and so forth, then we say that the set is independent. Now if a set of vectors V spans S and they're also independent, then V forms a basis for the set S. Today we're going to talk about bases and some of the properties of bases. A set of vectors S equals to the set V1, V2, out to the Vn, and a vector space V is called a basis for V. Got the vector space V. It's called a basis for V if the following conditions are true. The first, S must span V. So the set of vectors must span the vector space. The second is S is linearly independent. So the set of vectors S must be linearly independent. Determine whether S is equal to the set of vectors 1, 5, 3, 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, 6 is a basis for R cubed. Well, let's first of all check to see whether S spans R3, 3 space. So the first is to check to see whether S spans 3 space. Let's let X, Y, Z be a vector in 3 space. Well then, if S spans 3 space, then that means X, Y, Z is going to be a linear combination of the vectors. Now rather than using C1, C2, C3, I'm going to use A, B, and C for my constants. So the vector X, Y, Z will be a linear combination of the vectors in S if X, Y, Z is equal to A times 1, 5, 3 plus B times 0, 1, 2 plus C times 0, 0, 6. Which here's a linear combination of the three vectors. And we're saying if, if S spans 3 space, then any arbitrary vector in 3 space can be written as an arbitrary vector as a linear combination of the three vectors. This means I have X, Y, Z would equal to A, 5a, 3a, plus 0, b, 
2b plus 0, 0, 6c. Or that would equal to a plus 0 plus 0, 5a plus b plus 0, 3a plus 2b plus 6c, which would be a 5a plus b, 3a plus 2b plus 6c. So we get x is equal to a, y is equal to 5a plus b, and z is equal to 3a plus 2b plus 6c by equating coefficients. Now I can write the matrix equation x, y, z would equal to the coefficient matrix 1 0, 0, 5, 1, 0, 3, 2, 6, times the A, B, C. See, if we multiply it out, that would be 1A plus 0B plus 0C, 5A plus B plus 0C, 3A plus 2B plus 6C. Now, this matrix is lower triangular, so therefore I know that its determinant would be the product of the entries along the diagonal. So the determinant is 6. The important thing is that the determinant is not 0. So if we call this the X matrix, we call this the A matrix, and we call that the coefficient matrix, then are the constants then the important thing is that A is not 0, or the determinant of A is not 0. So therefore, A is not singular. Therefore, the system has a unique solution. So for any x, y, and z, I can find a, b, and c so that I would have a set of equations satisfied. So therefore, S spans three space. Now the second thing we have to do is to check to see if S is independent. Now S is independent if and only if the linear combination of the vectors in S equal to zero has only the trivial solution. So we have A times 1, 5, 3, plus b times 0, 1, 2, plus c times 0, 0, 6 is equal to 0. So that would be a, 5a, 3a, plus zero B two B plus zero zero 
6c is equal to the zero vector, zero, zero, zero. So I would have a 5a plus b 3a plus 2b plus 6c is equal to 0, 0, 0. I have a is equal to 0. 5a plus b is equal to 0. 3a plus 2b plus 6c is equal to 0. Now a equals 0 gives the value for a. 5a plus b is equal to 0, so that means b is a negative 5a, but a is 0, so that means b is 0. Now 6c would equal to a negative 3a plus 2b, or c is equal to a negative 3a plus a negative 2b, that's negative because I'm bringing both of them across, divided by 6, but a is 0, b is 0, so I have 0 divided by 6, which is 0, so C is 0. So we have only the trivial solution. A equals 0, B equals 0, C equals 0. So therefore, independent. So if the set spans three space, and the set of vectors are independent, then the set of vectors form a basis for three space. So we were to determine whether S equals to 1, 5, 3, 0, 1, 2, 0, 0, 6 is a basis for three space, and we found out the answer is yes. Look at another example. Determine whether the set of matrices one zero zero one zero one one zero is a basis for the set of all two by two matrices. Well, first of all, we'll check to see if it spans. We'll check to see if the set of vectors or the set of matrices 1001 0, 0, 1, and 0110 0, 0, 0, span the set of all possible two by two matrices. Well, let's let X, Y, W, Z be a two by two matrix. Well, if it spans, if this set spans a set of all two by two matrices, then I can write this matrix, any of these, as a linear combination of those two. So I have X, Y, W, Z would equal to A times 1, 0, 0, 1, plus B times 0, 1, 1, 0. Well, this would equal to A, 0, 0, A, plus 0, B, B, 0, which is A, B, B, A. Now this gives me that X is A, Y is B, 
del B is B, Z is A. So if I equate coefficients, I get X is A, Y is B, W is B, and Z is A. So it's true only for X equal to Z and Y equal to W. So it's not true in general. In other words, it would not span in general. So the set does not span M22. It only spans the part of M22, the subset of M22, for which the diagonal entries are the same. X would equal to Z and Y is equal to W. So it only span the part of M22 that had the diagonals equal. So it doesn't span the complete set. So therefore it does not span M22. I'm about ready to present and prove a theorem for you. I want to remind you that I'm making no attempt to prove all the theorems. The textbook proves some of the theorems. Other theorems are left for you to prove. But to go through a course in linear algebra, you need to make sure that you understand the proofs of all the theorems. As I pick the ones to prove for you, I am picking the ones that appear to be a little bit difficult to see through, or the ones that serve as a good model for other proofs that you may have in your exercises. So let's look at the theorem. If S equals to V1, V2, Vn is a basis for a vector space V, then every vector in V can be written in one and only one way as a linear combination of vectors in S. So if S is a basis, now if it's a basis, then we know that it can be written as in one way, and that's rather obvious as I'll show in the proof. The other way, though, that it's unique is important for some of the future theorems that you're going to be pre presented. Now, any time that you have to prove something, and this is one of the patterns that you're looking for, and the reason I picked to prove this one is the one and only one way. So anytime we say that something can be done in one and only one way, you've got to prove first that there is a way to do it. That's the one way. And then you've got to prove that that one way is unique. In other words, you can't do it a second way. So it, this involves two parts. So a one and only one way will involve a two-part proof. proof. Existence is obvious, as I've already said, because if S is the basis, that means that S spans V, which means that every vector in V can be written as a linear combination of the vectors in S, which is, but I'll, I'll write it up. So existence is obvious. Since S spans V for any vector in U, u is equal to c1 v1, so this is just saying u can be written as a linear combination of v's, which is what it means when I say it spans it start with. So that proves existence, just that it can be done. Now let's look at uniqueness.
to prove uniqueness, let's suppose that U has another representation. And this is pretty much the pattern you follow to prove uniqueness. You're going to assume that there is a second. So we know U has one representation. We've already established that simply because it spans. So I know that U is C1V1 plus C2V2 plus CNVN. Well, what we're doing now is, let's assume that there is a second one. Well, if there's a second one, then U would equal to D1V1 plus D2V2 and so forth. I've got to use the same vectors because, remember, we're still dealing with the set of vectors in S. But I can choose different constants if there's going to be another representation. What I'm going to do is just do U subtract U. So the, on the other sheet, remember U was C1 V1 plus C2 V2 and so forth. So if I subtract U minus U, this U minus that U, then I'd have U minus U. I've got C1 minus D1 V1. C2 minus D2, V2, and so forth. Up to Cn minus Dn, Vn. So that's just subtracting term by term. But of course, we know U minus U is the zero vector. So I have zero is equal to C1 minus D1, V1, plus C2 minus D2, V2, plus Cn minus Dn Vn. Now equating coefficients, this would be the zero vector, which is zero, 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 up to zero n times. Then I would have zero is equal to C1 minus D1. Well, C1 minus D1 is zero. That means that C1 is D1. I'd have C2 minus D2 is equal to zero, which means C2 is D2 and so forth. Well, if C2, if all the C's are the same, then actually U has only one representation. So we have proved uniqueness. Here's a very important theorem. If a vector space V has one basis within vectors, then every basis for V has n vectors. If a vector space V has one basis within vectors, then every basis for n has n vectors. Now if we'd already presented this one prior to the example of M22, I wouldn't have had to have done any work. I could have simply have presented it with M22 because I know that the set 1, 0, 0, 0 0, 1, 0, 0 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1 is a basis for the set of all 2 by 2 matrices. So I know that this is a basis. And you can see this if I were to write the linear combination of uh, x, y, w, z is equal to a, b, that would just end up being a, b, c, d, so you're just picking the four uh, letters that would make it true with these. So you can trace through and see that it would be a basis. Okay, this basis has four elements. The basis has four elements. What this theorem tells you then is all bases 
four M two two. We'll have four elements. The bases we checked in the previous or the set we checked in the previous example only had two elements. Since it only had two elements, it couldn't possibly have been a basis. It didn't have enough elements. So if I find one basis that has four elements, then I know that all bases must have four elements. So if V has a basis consistent of N vectors, then N is called the dimension of V. If V has only the zero vector, the dimension of V is defined to be zero. So this is the definition here. Because up here, if, if it has uh, a basis consistent of n vectors, then n is called the dimension. So that if you have consisting of n vectors, then the number of vectors is the dimension. But if it has only the zero vector, then the dimension is defined to be zero. So the dimension of the set of all two by two matrices, the dimension for any base of the set of all two by two matrices has to be four because it took four elements to span it. Find the basis for the vector space of all three by three symmetric matrices and give the dimension of the vector space. Now if I had not said symmetric, we know that the dimension would be nine. So if we go in and we temporarily block out symmetric, and we say find the basis for the vector space of all three by three matrices, then that would be one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, Zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 zero. Zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one, zero, and zero, zero, zero. Zero, 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 one. So we can see there would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine elements. So there would be nine elements if I had simply said find the basis for the vector space of all three by three matrices. So M33 has dimension of nine. But I didn't ask you that. I said, find the basis for the vector space of all three by three symmetric matrices and give the dimension of the vector space. Well, if we want symmetric matrices, we can use one, zero, 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 zero. nothing wrong with that one. 
But when I go to zero, one, zero, I can't put all three zeros here. It wouldn't be symmetric. So I have to go one, zero, 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 zero. So it has to be symmetric. Then I can go zero, zero, one. Now if I put a one here, then it's one, got to be a one down here for symmetry. Now I come, if I put the one here, I'd have to have the one up there. I already have that one, so I don't need to list it again. But I could have the one in the middle, so that would be zero, 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 one, zero, 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 zero. Zero, 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 one. But for symmetry, I'd have to have the one there. And finally, we have zero, 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 one. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to just use one, a single one everywhere, but in order to remain symmetric, sometimes I have to put in the second one. And I've listed all the ways I can do that. So here is one basis for the set of all three by three symmetric matrices. Well, what I said was give the dimension of the vector space. Well, if one vector space has dimension six, then all vector spaces that would serve as a basis would have vector six. So if one basis has dimension six, then all bases have dimension six. So the dimension of the symmetric three by three matrices is six.